In this class, we're looking at in roast gaze. In roast gaze, basically means you know, sort of screw into. So think of like going in and turning around yourself. Usually that means tucking the foot and then again, pivoting or twisting. So the first exercise that we worked on with our students for this is to step. Let's start with the left foot. We're gonna step with the left and then come together and tuck. We wanna tuck not with the foot out like this or up here, but sort of down on the floor and flat. So that the pad of the foot, the ball of the foot is flat on the floor as much as we can make it. So the right knee sort of comes in a little to the side and behind the, um, the left knee. So it's not over here. That's probably going to pull the foot up. Okay. And this takes a lot of balance, lots of practice. Um, so if we really want to do this and then pivot about 180 degrees. So I want to think about a spot back on this wall. First I step and I tuck, and then I twist, okay? So do that a few times. Step, tuck, and twist. Okay. Just to get used to doing this. Now the tucking can happen a little bit as we're twisting, but it shouldn't mean step, turn, and then Although that could be nice as well, but I'm not sure that would qualify as an inverse gay if the foot's not tucked for most of the turn. Okay. We're also not going to, this happens with most pivots, is we in Kenya we really don't have the luxury of a wind up. I can't really go here and in there because the embrace isn't quite going to let that happen. It really needs to be from here. So this tuck or twist is going to happen down here, being driven from the core. And then do it on the other foot. Step to the right, tuck, and turn. So do that a little bit with some music. And then we're going to put that into a step. We're going to start with this is the very basic step for learning in most days. I'm going to step outside the partner and then move my body weight up over my right so the shelly collects, then lead her to a side, and then to a board. Here I'm going to step in for a saccata, and there's where I'm going to tuck and then create a lapis to a parada. We can come back and that's it. Kind of hard to do slow, kind of needs that momentum going into the step. One thing it requires is one a lot of balance on both parts, but especially on the leaders. And it requires the followers to be doing a very good molinete around the leader. Because if the follower goes away or comes too close and we're on one foot trying to pivot, it's gonna be very difficult. We also don't want to go up I want to keep it more level as I go around. Now to pivot, I want to be on the ball of my foot, but I don't want to go up here to try to do it. have a lot going on in this stuff. So this is a pretty 
solidly advanced stuff in that we've got a cicada, we've got an ambrosia, then we have a bakis, and then a parada. Sorry, it's hard to talk in the <laughs> same time. For the lockies, which is this part here, I'm just going to do it from just a regular backhoe trim. I want to bring the foot in next to Shelly's supporting leg there, and then it goes around and comes back to catch her forward cross. So her back cross and her forward cross. I don't want to send this foot, I can have it, this often happens sort of starting out here. I actually want it to come in here. And then it should be out of her way before she actually takes that step. Because again, we need her to be really going around and knowing those steps of the molnete. Now, also, I have to keep, this is a challenge of this, is that as I'm doing this, I'm having to keep my upper body turned going in the direction that I want her to do the molnete. So, if I do this, and then I stop, then she's, you know, not going to continue on. So I have to keep the upper body turning so that she'll keep going. See how my upper body was in constant motion going around. If it stops, she's going to stop. Usually in rough skates, in the last two classes, we looked at them for men. And usually they're referred to as a leader's embellishment. But we can actually, the followers can use them as embellishments as well. We look at them particularly in ochos. Forward ocho, Shelly can top, pivot, and then step. I am not leading this. Shelly's just working in the one forward. You know. So, definitely something for the followers to use really whenever they're doing a forward cross. They can tuck in front or in back. 